get some positive value for that. A positive times a negative is going to give you a negative. But if you take the fourth root of any negative, it will not work. All right. Whenever you have an even power right here, you cannot have a negative inside the radicand. So therefore, what we know is that we must make sure that x is negative. Because when I take a negative and I cube it, it stays negative. But a negative times this negative right here becomes positive. You can take the fourth root of a negative. So that's why this is my restriction right here, such that it must be negative. All right, this is kind of a long lesson. You might want to take a break here. It is going to be a hair bit longer. Hang in there. Since variables represent numbers, the strategy we use to simplify radicals with numerical radicands can be extended to simplify radicals whose radicands contain a variable. So we're going to see some variables now that we can uh, simplify with. All right, these are. Uh, I think you'll kind of like these. So. Uh, for which values of the variable is each radical defined, and then they also want you to simplify them. All right, so uh, let's start. Uh, I don't know. Let's start here. Since, if you recall, we know that when you take the square root of some value a squared, this is from your previous lesson, that is equal to the absolute value of a. So what we can say is that the radical is defined for a, basically for any value of a. This represents a can be really anything, any real number. All right. So what we know, right, is that no matter what a, a is when you square it, it's going to end up becoming positive. And so that's what that absolute value does. It makes everything positive. So I can come down here, and then when we go to simplify this, I can write this as the Square root of 45 times the absolute value of a. Well, let's simplify root 45. Root 45 is the same thing as 9 times 5, a perfect square I'm looking for. All right. And then we have the square root of 9 is 3. And we have 3 root 5, then, times the absolute value of a. That is what that will simplify to be every single time, no matter what that a value is. OK, turn the page. Uh, two, what is it? Three more examples. These guys aren't too, aren't too bad. Next one we have the square root of negative 27 b to the power of 9. All right. So keep in mind that it's to the power of 9. Pay attention to that. Actually, let's do this top part in red again. Since the square root of b to the power of 9 has an odd exponent b to the 9 could be positive or negative. So the comparison I'm trying to make here is that if you remember when we had some variable to the power of 3, it could be positive or negative. But since we are taking the square root, And we already have a negative coefficient. So you see the negative in front of the 27. Oops, that's getting ugly. The radical is defined when b is less than or equal to 0. It's very similar than uh, one of the ones we did earlier. Basically, we have to make sure that this outcome right here becomes negative, such that a negative times a negative is a positive, and we can take the square root of that. So keep that in mind. All right. So now let's go ahead down here, and we simplify. So, All right. We have the square root of negative 27, b to the ninth. And if we simplify this, we're looking for perfect squares that go into 27. We have a 9 times a negative 3. And now with the b's here, what you need to do is, since we are taking the square root of it, we need to make these uh, the b's have a even exponent. And so I'm going to make this b to the 8th times b. If you recall, that's just the same thing. But you'll see what's going to happen here. The square root of 9 is 3. 
nothing else you can take the uh, the square root of with the exception of b to the 8. So if you remember, if you take the square root of b to the 8, that's the same thing as saying b to the 8 all to the uh, 1 half. Well, 8 times 1 half gives you b to the 4 outside here. And that simplifies to have a negative 3b inside. So that would be simplified completely, and that would be your restriction, if you will. Okay, Two more. Uh, next one, we have the fourth root of 7z. Well, since, this is kind of an easy one, since we have an even index, the radicand must be positive. Okay, whenever that's even, must be positive. You really got to remember that. So what do we know about that? Well, that means that z must be greater than or equal to 0. Now, they also want you to go ahead and simplify this. Well, this one, like I said, is kind of easy. You can't take the fourth root of 7 or z, so you just leave it right there. Beautiful thing. Okay, last one. We have the cube root of 24, y to the 5. All right, so since the index is odd, then what do we know about that? We know that what's ever in here can be either positive or negative. So since the index is odd, we can have a positive or negative radicand. So what that means is that y can be anything. So when we say y can be anything, then that just looks like this. y is a member of the reals. Okay, so that would be a restriction. Now to simplify this guy. Well, we got the q root of 24y to the 5. We need to look at 24. 24 first. Are there any perfect cubes that go into 24? Well, uh, let's take over. We got 1, 8, 27. It's probably going to be 8. 8 times 3, of course. Okay. Make sure I'm going to write them in brackets since it looks a little bit nicer. I encourage you to do that. We got 8 times 3. Okay. Now, y to the 5. We need to think of some y that when you raise it to the power of 1 third or we deal with that 3 outside, um, it'll simplify. So, of course, it's going to be something that's a multiple of 3. So we have y cubed and then times y squared. When you simplify this, we have the 8 pops outside, and that's cube root of 8 is 2. And then when you take the q root of y to cubed, you just get a y. So we have 2y, the q root of what's left over, we have a 3y squared. Okay, so that concludes this lesson.